What up guys, Max here, welcome to my ultimate season 11, Echo Guide. Welcome everybody, this is the outline to the Ultimate Season 11 Echo Mid Guide. And before we continue with the outline, I just want to say the information from this guide comes from a compilation of three sources. Firstly, me. I peaked 200 LP Grandmasters on the North American server, going for Challenger next year. Secondly, Haha ha, Never Lucky. He is the best Echo in the US, the rank one EUS Echo player, really, really good player. And thirdly, Xiaolao Ban. He is the rank one Echo player in the world as we all know so from us three i made this guide of all the information that i know so this guide will be split up into three parts intro to echo mechanics and in game firstly we'll start off with runes summoner spells and the builds basic stuff for echo that you need to know then for mechanics we'll talk about combos like all the cool echo combos with like protobelt and all that stuff um your w interactions your w stunts how to how to use your w wall jumps and how to steal objectives, because Echo's really good at that. And then lastly, and for the in-game section, we'll go through all 77 Echo mid lane matchups, rate, rate them from hardest to easiest, and basically give you guys a brief description of how to play that matchup, courtesy of Haha ha Never Lucky. He made an entire Excel sheet on every champion. Really cool, I'll link it. I'll link everybody's information in the description of the video. Check everybody out. And we'll finish it off with early game laning staying in lane and then out of lane split pushing all that stuff team fighting so that's the outline of the guide so are we ready to get into the guide let's do it this is the intro to echo all right let's start off with the runes so there is one main tree for echo and then it's the domination tree there are some people who go conquer you know there's sometimes what about grasp what about this what about that in the end of the day the best starting room page for echo the main tree is domination with electrocute so that'll be the main one we will be focusing on for this video yes conquer exists with like tanky ish echo yes some people play grasp echo top if they want if they need to be tanky but for the most part electrocute domination is the best main room page and basically in 99 percent of matchups you'll be going electrocute domination because electrocute is just too strong not to go on echo but the second rune trees there's a lot of variability here. So you could go either inspiration, sorcery, or precision second tree. So I took it upon myself through the entire preseason to play like a couple of weeks of sorcery, play a couple of weeks of precision, play a couple of weeks of inspiration. And now I'll tell you guys the three different room pages that I used, and I'll tell you which ones I like the best and didn't like the best, and what situations might work for you to use these room pages. So let's get into inspiration. So this is the inspiration second tree that I've been using recently. But firstly, for the domination section, it pretty much stays the same all the time. Electric Goose on an Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter. Um, the only time it does change is when you're versing a Kassadin. Because Kassadin negates magic damage by like 15%, instead of taking Sudden Impact, if you want to beat Kassadin early game, you could take Cheap Shot. So you do true damage in the early game with your Q and stuff. So that's the only change. But regardless, the domination tree stays the same. And here we have the inspiration tree. So for the inspiration tree, I use magical boots and biscuits. Last season, we used dematerializers. This season, you don't need dematerializers because in like 80% of your games, you'll be able to one-shot the wave of level seven just with all the AP that's in the game now. So you do not need, you do not need dematerializers. So I go free boots and biscuits. Why free boots? Free boots, they, they're really good because they give you 10 more extra movement speed. But on top of that, you don't have to spend money on boots and you can spend your money on finishing your core main item, portal belt. So that's the main reason why I like this room page. And on top of that, biscuits. So there's like a special start with Echo now where you go dark seal refillable if you want to be really greedy. But it's not that greedy because you'll have TP and you'll have biscuits, which are biscuits are basically like a corrupting potion and they give you permanent mana. So they're pretty good. So this is a room page I like. You could go time or tonic. If you like Time or Tonic or Corrupting Potion, but honestly, this season I've been using all these different Echo starts, and I think Corrupting Potion is kind of outdated nowadays. You can just go for the greedy starts, get away with it, and then just hard 1v9 the game. So that's why I like free boots, and the biscuits are really good for helping you 
fly through the early game and get to your proto belt. And now the next popular rune page for Echo is the Sorcery Rune Page. I use this at the start of the preseason because the CDR went away because all the items don't give you CDR anymore. So Transcendence got a rework, so now it gives you 10 Ability Haste. And then at level 11, it gives you like uh, resets, like 20% of your cooldown gets refunded when you get a killer assist, which sounds really good, and it is really good. The problem, my only problem with this Rune Page is that Transcendence is really good, but everything else is really bad. You don't need mana full ban this season because they buffed Echo's mana. Nimbus Cloak is bad on Echo. Scorch is bad on Echo. A Water Walking is probably only good for Echo Jungle, even if you if you even go Echo Jungle with Sorcery. Gathering Storm doesn't do anything until 20 minutes. And then Nullifying Orb is really only good if you're versing like a LeBlanc or something. So every other minor rune in this page is kind of useless. So Transcendence carries the load. So if I was gonna go Sorcery, I would go Transcendence Mana Flow Band, or if I'm versing like, or Gathering Storm, if it's gonna go like, a, if it's like lower reloads and the games usually last longer, or if I'm versing like a LeBlanc or something, maybe I'll go Nullifying Orb. But I like this room page for the for the CDR, for the CDR that you get on Transcendence, but I feel like it doesn't give you as much value, especially in the early game, compared to like the Inspiration Tree with the biscuits and the free boots to help you build your uh, Proto Belt faster. So yeah, this room page is still good. A lot of people use it. I know a lot of high level players use it, but I just I just hate taking Mana Flow Ban. I feel like this room page is just carried by Transcendence. But if you like the CDR, if you want the CDR, this is the room page for you. And lastly, the last room page is Jalau Ban's room page that he started using a lot this season, and that's Domination Precision. So for the precision tree, you want to go Presence of Mind with Legend Tenacity. So the thought process behind this room page is that Presence of Mind basically is like, it gives you mana. So you know how Sorcery Tree, the Mana Flow Band gives you mana, Inspiration Tree, the Biscuits give you mana. For the precision tree, Presence of Mind gives you the mana. And after you get a kill Presence of Mind, you get even more mana back. So it helps you like prolong a fight if you're, if you're down in mana. And if you hit somebody with your abilities, you also get mana back. So it's, it gives you a, a good amount of mana sustain. But the main reason why you go Precision is for the Legend Tenacity. So this season with Echo, you only want to build Sork Boots. Only Sork Boots, because Sork Boots works so well with Proto Belt's Magic Pen. So you get like true damage so early into the game, especially with Void Staff and all that Mythic Passive true damage. If you don't go Sork Boots, you're losing so much damage. So, in order to always go Sork Boots, Jalal Ban always goes Legend Tenacity. Why? Because you basically get free Merc Treads. You can't get CC'd because you have Legend Tenacity. The problem with this room page is, is that you shouldn't go this room page every game because there are some games where the enemy team has no CC, so there's really no reason why you would go Legend Tenacity if they had no CC. But I would go this room page if you're versing an enemy team who has like, you know, has like a TF who gold cards you if they have Morgana, all those hard CC champions, then I would consider going uh, Legend Tenacity Precision. So those are the three Echo Rune pages that you may want to use. Right now, my favorite is, is, is Inspiration. At the start of the preseason, it was Sorcery, and in the middle, it was Precision. So I tried all of them. I liked all of them. But right now, I think I like Inspiration the best. I feel like it fits my playstyle the best. But it's up to you to try out every Rune page and see which one works best for you, because everyone plays differently. With that being said, those are the room pages. Let's get into the summer spells. All right, so let's talk about summer spells for Echo. This one's going to be pretty easy. So the main one is Flash. You always take Flash on Echo. Pretty much everyone knows why. It's Flash. That's not the question here. The question is about Teleport or Ignite. Some people say go Ignite. Some people go say go Teleport. When do you go Teleport? When do you go Ignite? Well, firstly, in most matchups with Echo, Teleport is the best option. Teleport helps you split push. Helps you survive early game because Echo's early game is probably his weakest is his weakest point in the game. So teleport helps you survive early game. Helps you TP to your side lanes, help your team. Helps helps you split push mid to late game. Teleport is very versatile, really good. So that so you, you basically always want to use teleport. But there are times where ignite is actually better for you than teleport. Firstly, in the lower elos where it's harder to use teleport correctly because teleport does have a long cooldown. So if you waste your teleport then you kind of waste their summoner spell. So that's why people tend to tell lower elo, lower elo players to go Ignite because Ignite has half the cooldown of Teleport 
gives you more kill pressure, and it's, it's hard to mess up using Ignite, right? But if you're a lower ELO, you can still use TP because that's a good time to start learning how to use TP. If you, you'll never learn how to use it if you don't use it, right? But the main points that you use Ignite are versus healers. So Salas, Vlad, Soraka, Hecarim Jungle. If you want anti-healing and lane priority more damage, then you go Ignite, right? Another time that you go Ignite is if you have to kill enemy mid laner, right? Like you're versing a Kassadin. Kassadin will, out, will outscale you, so but you do have a window to kill him in the early game, right? So, especially... So that's why you take Ignite, so you, you kill him early. Or, you're versing like a hard, like a super hard matchup like Aurelia. Sometimes you want to take TP into super hard matchups, but if you have a ganking jungler, let's say like a Rek'Sai, or like a Kozlik, like a good early game high damage jungler, then you take Ignite and you try to kill the OP mid laner, right? So those are the basically the times where you want to go Ignite versus TP. Most games you'd want to go TP. There, and in less situations you want to go Ignite, and those situations are for anti-healing and early kill pressure. But that being said, let's get into Echo's builds. So for Echo's build, I posted the dream build on the screen. This is the build that I go to every game. There's not much variety anymore in season 11. You basically just do one thing, carry the game, that's it. <laughs> Literally, because they kind of messed up the items. And there's actually less variety now. Unlucky. But anyway, so this is the, I'm going to describe every part of this build, and it's pretty simple as to why you do this. Number one, for starting items, you could go Corrupting Potion, Dark Seal, or Doran's Ring. So for me, right now I start Dark Seal with Refillable. And then I either back for a Doran's Ring if I need extra HP and sustain, or I go straight through proto to Proto Belt. Why? Because if you build Corrupting Potion, Dark Seal, and Doran's Ring, you're wasting a lot of gold. You need to get your Proto Belt. Proto Belt is a lot more expensive this season, but a lot stronger. So you want to get to it as fast as possible. I don't start Corrupting Potion anymore either, although you still could. I just feel like it's also a little bit of waste of gold, especially because we don't use Time War Tonic anymore. If you're using Time War Tonic, if you like that rune, then you have to go Corrupting Potion. But because we're not using that rune, Dark Seal doesn't buff the healing from Corrupting Potion anymore. So Corrupt Corrupting Potion did get sort of a nerf this season. So the greediest, but also most cost efficient start is Dark Seal Refillable. And then depending on your matchup, you want to you back, you get you start building your uh, proto belt. But if you're versing a really strong matchup, like a hard one, go Doran Ring as well for more early game power. But then you go proto belt into Sork Boots. Always build Sork Boots. Sork Boots are so strong a proto belt mythic passive. You you never need tabbies. You never need merc trust unless you want to get carried. I'm sorry. Sork Boots will help you one nine every game. If you're versing a Silas, you can build anti healing with with the Oblivion Orb and sit on that till last item. Or versus like a Vlad. If you got those juicy Magi stacks, rush the Magi's and don't die, and then super snowball the game. Magi's also gives you the mythic passive of Proto Belt, so it has even more value. And then after your Proto Shark Boots, maybe Magi's, you go Nasher's Tooth. So I started doing Nasher's Tooth last season; it became very popular. Nasher's Tooth this season is better than Lich Vein in every way, aside from movement speed. But if you go Magical Footwear, you almost have a good amount of movement speed with Nasher's Tooth. Because Lich Man gives you 10% more movement speed, that's all it gives you though. Based on damage wise. Nasher's Tooth equals Lich Bane Burst because it gives you 20 more AP than Lich Bane. Nasher's Tooth gives you a lot more attack speed and on hit that helps you fight Bruisers, which Lich Bane does not let you do. And Nasher's Tooth is really good for split pushing because you get to have faster auto attack speed. So, Lich, uh, so Nasher's Tooth is a lot more versatile than Lich Bane. There are some games where you might want to go Lich Bane just for the movement speed, because if the enemy team has like a lot of high mobility champions, then you might want the movement speed from Lich Bane. But aside from that, Nasher's Tooth beats Lich Bane every single way. Then after Nasher's Tooth, you have two choices. You either have Void Staff. If the enemy team has over 55 MR on multiple members, go Void Staff, because the Void Staff becomes really strong. If not, Go Death Cap, and then last item, Void Staff. And by this time, you should have Proto Belt, Sword Boots, Nashers, Void, Death Cap, Medjice. That is six items. If you don't have your Medjice stacked, maybe go for a Morel Namacon, or maybe a, maybe a Zanya's 
maybe a Banshees, maybe a Demonic Embrace. Last item is really up to you. Usually games don't go that long, but it's really up to you. And then make sure you buy Elixir or Sorcery when you have a full build, because it gives you a fat amount of damage and AP. So this is a core build for me. I know if you watch Coach Curtis's guide on Echo, he, he recommends after Nasher's Tooth to go like Zonyas or Banshees. I'm not a defensive player. I believe in full damage with Echo. Uh, I don't like building the defensive items. I probably build Zonyas and or Banshees probably once every 20 games. I don't really build that at all unless I want to get carried and I'm, and I'm playing really bad. So I just want to be like a meat shield. But aside from that, this is my favorite Echo build on the screen. Uh, yeah. So that is part one of the Echo Guide. All the basics of Echo's builds, runes, and summoner spells. Now let's get into some juicy mechanics. All right, guys, let's start off with some Echo combos, animation cancels. Then we'll get into how to hit Echo's W. And then we'll get into the cool don't level up your R mechanics. So there's not that many Echo mechanics. Echo's more of a champion that is easy to learn, hard to master. That's why you always see pro players int and competitive because you can't learn uh, Echo to a, to a really high level in a short amount of time. You have to really know his limits and really know how to use his combos and when to use his combos. So the most basic combo is just E, click, Q, auto attack. So just E, click, Q, auto attack, boom. That's a simple, slow echo combo that guarantees your damage but we could do this faster with animation cancels what are animation cancels they're basically canceling one animation with another so you saw how we did e click q auto well you can do this really fast by clicking e then q really fast so look i do eq boom a lot faster right so that's the animation the eq animation cancel that's your main combo it's your fastest burst and you run away right EQ, boom. You see how I do a slide? So that's the most basic, but also most important echo animation cancel. So now let's go into more animation cancels. You could do, you could, so if you want to throw your W and then you want to E onto somebody, right? Well, you could actually cancel your W animation with your E. So you could do EW and you do a nice slide. Let's do that one more time. You see that slide? It's really fast. You can also do this. Not all, You can also do this to get away, right? So say you're running away. Instead of going in on somebody, you can also do it to run away because you sort of like get a fast slide to run away, run safely away. So that so we showed QE. We showed EW. There are some interesting animation cancels that we don't really use that much, like Q Proto Belt. See how your Proto Belt and Q have to happen at the same time? That you don't really use that much by itself. There's also E Proto Belt. You see how the you cancel one of the dashes, so you you don't really use that either, because why would you want to cancel one of the dashes? But just so you guys know, but the biggest echo, actually right before I go into the biggest echo combo, here's another echo combo that's used for running away. So you're versing like a Yasuo or a Fizz, someone who jumps on you, right? Instead of doing instead of doing this, right, the standard combo, they come at you. So you want to do this. You want to. Let me wait till my passive comes back. You want to auto attack, E back, Q, boom. This way, you E backwards so they can't hit you. You Q them for the slow. You pop them, get the movement speed, and run away. So let's do that one more time. Auto, E back, throw a Q, click, run away. So that's like the defensive echo combo. Let's do that. Let's do it faster. Auto, boom. Boom, run away. Really good, really good. And now for the most popular well the best echo combo it has to do with proto belt that's why proto belt is really amazing on echo because it allows you to do this combo so we saw the eq animation combo right now we'll throw in the proto belt into that combo so you want to do eq proto belt boom that is the ultimate echo combo insane burst insane damage and it's beautiful let's see that let's see that one more time nice really good combo one thing to note Proto Belt was changed this season, so like if I Proto Belt a uh, 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 the minion, right? It doesn't matter if multiple bolts hit the enemy because they last season it would splash. This season doesn't splash, but this season you get movement speed. So instead of like Proto Belting close range like this, 
there are times now in this season where because of the movement speed you want to protobelt from far away and then get the movement speed to catch up to the enemy right so you don't always have to protobelt point blank because it doesn't really do extra damage you want to protobelt sometimes if they're really really far away from you to catch up to them with the movement speed so just just a note and one more thing to note about protobelt protobelt can also poop and what i mean by that is protobelt can also poop look so you do damage coming out your butt. So protobelt can also poop. So that's why if you do this, you still hit them because you pooped behind them, you know? So that's one thing to note. And uh, quickly, uh, some W interactions. So obviously, when you throw your W, if you walk, they get slowed, right? But when you walk into it, they get stunned. Well, you don't have to actually be inside your W for them to get stunned for example your ult could do it so look i click r and they still got stunned because my ult passed through the w that's a cool icon mechanic and some other mechanics that make that make the game easier for you if you ever want to flash into range you, you don't want to do this you, you don't do flash e that takes too long you want to do e flash you want to go e flash boom a lot faster also, if you ever want to ult to the target, you don't want to do this. Well, you could do it. It still works sometimes. But if you do this, that is slow, right? So what you want to do, you want to E before your ult. So you want to do something like E, R, and then you instantly click so you don't have to do another animation. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the biggest echo mechanics. One more mechanic is just uh, make sure you play around your W. So you, I mean your R. For maximum burst, just whatever you do a combo, always try to set up your R on the enemy target. Try to bait them into walking to your R, because in late game team fights, your R does a lot of damage, or even in any part of the game. So you want to make sure when you're fighting, you fight around your posi the position of your R. So those are the main things to know about echo combos. Uh, little things you could use your portal belt to dodge skill shots. You could use your E to dodge skill shots. You could use your your E to redirect your Qs, like, just, you know, reposition yourself. And one more thing to note, at max range, your Q will instantly double stack. So what does that mean? Look, this is a max range Q. Instant double stack. So that's how you, so you could always surprise enemy if they're at max range with an instant double stack. It surprises them a lot. But as far as combos and basic stuff, that's pretty much all you need to know in Echo. You just gotta master it, learn your limits. So let's get into some and uh, some. Let's talk about W placement and the not leveling up your R at level six trick. So now let's talk about hitting Echo's W. I'll show the clip from the start of the of the Echo guy because it's really good W, and we'll talk about how I hit it. So firstly, Echo W, I say it's less of a mechanical skill and more of a mental skill, like a brain skill. Why? Because the point of Echo's W, you have to predict the movements of the enemy or your movements three seconds in advance, right? So you either predict where you want to go in three seconds or you predict where the enemy wants to go in three seconds or you combine both where you want to go, where you want the enemy to go and boom, you combine it all in a three second time span. So, so for Echo's W, so how do you like do that? How do you how do you know about anything about a W? It's just about playing the game enough to know what the enemy wants to do. So why did I throw my W here? I threw my W here because the enemy is chasing my my Zin Zhao. So I know so I know they want to kill him. And on top of that, I know the speed of the enemy champion. So I know in three seconds they'll be in this spot. They won't they won't be past the bush. They won't be going in some weird direction. I know what the enemy wants to do. I know they want to chase my team. I know their movement speed. So what do I so what do I do? I throw my W in a spot where they're gonna be and a spot that I can get to. So the biggest thing, like you can't teach Echo W. You have to learn it yourself. You have to learn how the enemy plays in your ELO. Because this is this is a diamond one game, right? So I just hard predicted how a diamond one player would move. And I, got, I basically got a four man stun. Obviously they, one of them flashed out of it, but so you just have to mentally gap and use your 3000 IQ to predict the enemy's movements or bait them into the movement that you want them to do. 
So that's basically how you hit Echo's W. There's not much more I can say about it. It's literally just practice. Practice predicting the enemy, the enemy and practice manipulating the enemy and to get him to go where you want them to go or where you want to go. So that's how you basically a brief description how to use Echo's W. So now let's talk about the famous Echo don't level up your R level 6 trick. I remember I started doing this at the preseason 10, so a year ago. So I had a year of practice doing this. It's uh, it's very hard to learn in the beginning because you'll you'll mess up a lot. I messed up a lot, but trust me, it's really good. Although people are starting to now understand that okay, Echo didn't level up as R level six. Watch out! But they still don't know where your R is because they, they they don't keep track of where your R was four seconds ago. That is your skill, not theirs. So you'll always have an advantage. You'll always catch them off guard. It's especially good versus junglers. Like if you're in a jungle fight or you're ganking bot and you don't level up your R yet, the jungler, the bot laners, they don't know that you don't have R. They're not watching mid lane, you know. So it's very, it's a very, really strong trick to get a lot of free kills and a lot of baits as well. So let's get into how you do this. So basically, practice makes perfect for everything. But I'm gonna show you guys this clip that you just got, you just watch on screen of how I kill a Syndra. So basically, I'm fighting a Syndra in lane, right? I don't, I don't level up my R yet. So what do I do? I fight Syndra normally, EQ. I don't want to auto attack because I knew she would CC me, so I just wanted to like run away to dodge her stun. She actually messed up, actually. But anyway, now she's. She, this is the perfect spot because she's in kill range, right? And she's walking into my R. I know this. She doesn't know this. I know this because I know where my R was. Count one, two, three, four. R. Boom. I catch her by surprise, I level up my R, catch her by surprise. Now, I'm actually behind her, which is even better. Hit her with my R, boom, auto attack, and I'll get the passive and she can't escape. So this trick gets you so many kills, so many baits. Practice makes perfect on this. You just have to learn, learn and memorize where your R was four seconds ago. It'll become second nature to you once you do it a couple of times. In the beginning, it was really hard for me, but after a couple of months, it becomes bread and butter. So that is the don't level up your R. A level six trick and how it's done in action. You can bait a lot of people doing this. I suggest recommend. I, I, I actually really recommend you doing this. It's really cool, high advanced echo trick to learn. And the more advanced tricks, the more advanced tricks you learn, the better you become as echo. So, yeah, get go out and learn it. So let's get into wall jumps now. This one's pretty easy. What's a wall jump? It's just using your E to go through terrain. So you could go through towers. You could go through tiny walls like this. So I'm not going to show every jump. I'm going to show the different thicknesses. So this is like, I would say, little thickness. Towers are a little thickness. Like this. Uh, I would say this is medium thickness. Because it'll go through this. This is a popular one. This is pretty thick. You have to stand right at the edge. And you could do that. You could do... This wall is also pretty thick. You have to be right here in this spot. Click E. Nice. This is a skinnier wall do this one as well this is the same thing as this wall except you could do it this way this wall you could also do is pretty thick nice so you just have to get you can just practice this really easily you could do this wall it's pretty thick as well you got to make sure you get the right spot though uh you obviously you could do the barren wall you could also do barren right here that's a pretty big one right here. You could do that. So I'm, try I'm, try I'm just trying to give you guys ideas what you could do. Um, so yeah, th that's pretty much all the thicknesses. There's one really thick wall. Let me telep... I could just teleport to it. Oh, I could just walk. So one of the thickest walls is... This wall is pretty thick too. too. Yeah, make sure you stand. See, this one you can't go all the way. You see how your character goes here? But you could still do it. But you it's easy to mess this one up. And then you could also do it back. But you see how you like don't go to the edge? So it's, you could mess this one up. Especially if you go like this, you'll mess it up. You have to go this way. But this is the thickest wall right here. This one's pretty hard to do in a game. You have to stand right here. I might even mess this up. Yeah, see? This one's very hard. You have to aim right here. Yeah, boom. And you can also do it backwards. Also really hard. You have to go right here. Aim right here. Boom. So this one's really hard to do. If you pull this off in the game, everyone will be like, you're smurfing. You have to like, flash, E. See, it's really hard. <laughs> Let me try again. Flash, E. Third time charm. Flash, E. It's pretty hard to do. And there's actually an even harder wall. That's like a, 
I would say this wall is like a 30% success rate. And there's an even harder wall that if I teleport to... Where's that button? Maybe I just walk there. Okay. So apparently you could dash this wall as well. This is basically the opposite of this one, but a lot harder because of the angle. I'm not sure I'll be able even to do it first try, but it's really hard. I would say this is like a 5% chance in game to do it. Because like your E doesn't even like, I might, I might not even do this. Let's see if let's see how long it takes me to do this. Okay, you get the idea. It's hard. All right, so now we'll talk about objective control and stealing with Echo because it's something that Echo does very well, and you should get used to doing it. You're basically a second jungler. So Echo's passive got hard buffed this season. Because Echo had really low, Echo Jungle had a really low uh, win rate in preseason 11, so they removed the the cap on monster damage on your passive, and they gave you 250% more damage. So that's kind of insane. So this is like late game Echo. Look how easy it is to steal a Baron. So how would you steal a Baron? Well, firstly, you want to get Vision, right? Throw your W, and then you get Vision like this also because your W gets Vision. And if you want to kill enemy jungler, you try to kill them. But if not, let's say you just want to go for the Baron, so you, you don't want to kill them. You could kill them. Let's say you want to go for the Baron instead, because let's say all five of them are alive. You, you don't want to int. You got to save your game. Your team inted. So it's really, it's impossible for the enemy to outsmite Echo. It's literally impossible. Why? Because Echo's W damage does 150 more damage to Baron and monsters if they're low HP, which Baron will probably be like, which Baron will probably be because you're trying to steal it. Your passive does uncapped damage. So look at what you can do. So what you want to do is you want to throw your W for vision. Then you want to throw out your Q. And then you want to sit on your passive. So you're going to do like 500 damage, 700 damage here. You sit on your Q. Boom. You have two stacks. 2,000 damage. You sit on those two stacks. Wait for the last moment. Pop. Let's do that again. So you're going to throw out your Q. You're getting ready, you're getting ready, you're getting ready. You, you, you have two stacks. You wait a second, you wait a second, you wait a second. Boom, 2,000 damage. There's no way the enemy jungler could smite. Well, they, they can't. Smite doesn't do 2,000 damage. So at, basically at 2,000 HP, you could just kill Baron with your passive if you're like this fed. But let's say it's not late game. Let's say it's like... Uh, let's say it's uh, early game, right? Or like, let's say mid game. Let's say you only have... Let's say you have these items. Let's just say you have these items, right? 300 AP. That's that's pretty pretty average, right? Let's see how much damage you do here. I am level 18 though, so take that into consideration. But let's say you only have 300 AP. Throw out a Q. 100, 200, 300. Boom. Look at that. 1200 damage. That is still more than I'm pretty sure that late game smite. Like, it's over 1000 damage. There's no way. And I didn't even use protobelt. You can also use protobelt for extra 100 damage. So, like... It's really easy for Echo to steal objectives, so keep mind of that and use it as you wish. Welcome everybody to part three of my ultimate Echo guide for season 11. In this part, we'll be talking about all of Echo's matchups from hardest to easy and sort of how to beat them because, so I just heard the guide, I said that I'll go through every single matchup and tell you guys how to beat it. But if I spend like a minute or two on every champion, this guy will be like three hours long and we don't want to sit and watch a three hour video. So with permission from HaHa ha Never Lucky, who is the best Echo in the US, he made an Excel sheet that tells you a briefly how to play every matchup and what, you, and what you should do. So this was designed for season 10, but season 11 is pretty much the same thing. A little bit, a few changes, but more or less the same. So I will link this Excel doc. Anybody can look at it. And it tells you how to play briefly versus every champion. So you got so it'll teach you guys basically how to play versus the champion you're playing against. So if you're queuing up and you're playing versus a rumble mid, well you go to the Excel sheet, you quickly read what it says, and hopefully it'll help you play versus Rumble, and then maybe you'll learn something new. So I'll give you guys access to this in the description of the video. And I'll also give you access to this. This is someone someone gave me. This is an Excel sheet of every champion's cooldowns based on their CDR. 
The, I believe this is last season. This is season 10 CDR, but it's pretty much the same thing this season. Uh, it's ability haste now, but you can still get the CDR somebody has. So if you're virtually like an Annie and you want to know at rank a level uh, Q level five, what's Annie's cooldown with 20% CDR? Oh, it's 3.2 seconds. So it'll help you win matchups if you really want to get technical. But yeah, I'll, I'll share this with you guys and I'll share the giant matchup guide. But for now, let's quickly talk about Echo's matchup tiers. This is this also comes from this, but I uh, changed a few stuff, some champions that uh, I didn't like. But anyway, the hardest Echo matchups, these are the ones you should avoid. Akali, Aurelia, Cassidy, LeBlanc, and then Renekton. Renekton is usually a top laner, but sometimes they're Renekton mids. These are the hardest Echo matchups in the entire game. These champions are literally designed to counter Echo. Avoid them at all costs. Can you still win the lane? Yes, with a lot of jungle help, but play, play it at a really high level. These champions just gap you. The hard row are champions that have a really big advantage on you, but you could still sort of play the game. So Diana, Katarina, Lucian, Riven, Silas, Yone, Yasuo, Zoe. These champions all inherently have something that you don't. For example, Silas just perma heals. You can't fight Riven. She's a bruiser. Lucian destroys you the entire early game. Katarina is usually a medium matchup, but AD Katarina is super strong because of on-hit Katarina for season 11. Kind of stupid. Uh, Yone Yasuo, they just have shields, have, have a lot of damage, build conquer as well. Echo loses to a lot of conquer champions if you don't if you didn't realize. Zoe gets that RN Jesus and gets a proto belt level 2 and a redemption. You know, really. So the, these champions right here are very cancerous matchups for Echo. So they're really hard. The medium matchups are matchups where you have a strength against the enemy, but they also have a strength against you. For example, Galia, right? F with Galia, right? He can't really kill you in lane, but you can really kill him. But when he, but you outscale him and you'll one-shot his entire team, right? But Galia could roam and CC your team. So you both have advantages and disadvantages. Take Talon, for example. You can outpush Talon. Right? Once you get a little bit later in laning phase. But in the early game, he's stronger than you. And then he just perma roams. So if your team dies to his roams, then it's kind of unlucky. But once you get a little bit of items, then you just out push him, out you know, you just you just you outclass Talon. Same thing with like uh TF, right? TF is a ranged champion. You could kill him early game. The problem with TF is he could push pretty pretty fast as well, but he has a global teleport, so you could teleport bot lane, boom. Your team is dead. So he has better, like, side lane. Like, he has better roams than you. He has global pressure. But you're an assassin. You could one-shot him. So all these matchups have a weakness and a strength. And both of you guys have weaknesses and strengths. So this, this these are really dependent on, on how you play versus how they play and jungle interference. Basically, yeah, it's just like a skills matchup. I'll give you another example. For example, Fizz, right? Fizz is super strong early game. He out damages you, has a pogo stick, you know, does a lot of easy combos, but you eventually out push him. You could eventually 1v1 him and then you outscale him. He could still kill your team, but you could kill him as well. So it's like, these these are very uh, skill-based uh, match-reliant matchups. These are extremely unplayable. These are really hard to play skill. The easy matchups are matchups that are in your favor. They have a little bit of strengths, but for the most part, <clears throat> your champion outclasses theirs, especially in scaling. So let me give you an example. Cassiope, right? Cassiope is one of my favorite matchups. She, she, if you get hit by her poison and her and her poison clouds, she'll kill you, right? But if you play correctly, you'll end up just one-shotting her over and over again, especially with Ignite. And then you outscale her as well. But if you int, then you know, she will win the game. Take a look at uh, Kiana, for example. Kiana is a strong AD assassin who also roams pretty well, but it's hard for her to kill Echo because you could R her ultimate, uh, you could dodge her abilities, you could out push her as well. So if you int if you into her, if you die to her early, then yeah, it'll be pretty hard for you because she'll she'll snowball. But if you play normally, because it's an easy matchup, you'll just outscale her and win the game. 
So that's a lot of these matchups. Sintra is another example. Sintra can poke you really hard early, but once you get your proto belt, you just jump on her one shot her. So all these champions have a sl have slight to medium strengths against Echo, but then Echo just outscales or gaps them if you play correctly. And then the bottom row are the super easy champions for Echo. These champions can't really do anything versus Echo, versus Echo's mobility, and versus Echo's scaling. The only way you really lose these matchups is if you harden. So these are all the matchups for Echo. Um, just so you guys know and familiar. I would ban the top row and maybe the second row as well. Everybody else here, you don't really need a ban, but very hard and hard, you should focus on banning. And like I said, if you want to learn how to play these matchups, the Excel sheet gives you a lot of help. But yeah, let's get into some laning. Welcome everybody to the laning slash out of laning part of this Echo Guide. I thought the best way to show you guys how to lane with Echo and how to play out of lane with Echo is by actually showing you an actual game, a really good game that I had on stream and I'm, and I'm voice overing it, sort of like a inside my Echo Mine video. So it's better than having just text on screen saying you should do this, you should do this. I want to actually show you guys what I do, what I do right, and what I do wrong. It's good, it's good to learn from mistakes as well. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm doing the Dark Silver Fillable start with Teleport, Biscuits, Free Boots as, as my runes and items. And I'm versing a Victor. Victor's considered an easy matchup, but he does have his strengths, which is his poke. And Victor actually is pretty strong this season with scaling because he, he no longer has to build his hex score items, so he can build normal items. But first things first, don't throw a Q instantly when the wave starts. That's bad. You don't want to push the wave. A, a good player will let will freeze the wave and then he'll get permaganked. So see, we're, we're playing really far back because we, we don't want Victor's strength, which is poke, to affect us. Here I throw a Q to get some minions. And actually, this was a bad Q because I was too close when I threw the Q. So I actually hit the, the range minions. So now the wave is pushing towards Victor. And I didn't, I didn't want this to happen. But you know, sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes it happens, but we could correct this. So now what we want to do, we want to crash the wave. So if you're ever in a situation where, oh no, I pushed the wave, I don't want him to freeze. Now you have to crash the wave. Luckily, Victor doesn't have amazing wave clear and he's not that good early game. So we're allowed to just hard push him into tower. So here, see I have three minions left, four minions left, and I clear those and look, it pushed into this tower. So he cannot freeze this anymore. So we're in a pretty good spot. And the wave is sort of resetting, so we got away with uh, we got away with a bad uh, bad cue because we were able to crash the wave. So now that the wave is reset, I want to go for level three because Victor is about to get level three off that minion. I get level three right now off that last melee minion. That's actually a pretty bad cue as well. Sort of, yeah, that's a pretty bad cue. But I see a gank in the top lane happening. I wasn't gonna TP to this, but then I saw a double flash, so I TP top. I jump onto Rexai. And I actually flashed for some reason. I think I flashed. For some reason, when this happened live, I didn't realize that Rek'Sai already knocked me up. I didn't want him to knock me up, then somehow burrow away. I don't know what happened, whatever. So that was kind of a bad flash. But we got double buffs, which is really good. So now we want to back instantly, because we have to get back to mid, because we're about to lose a lot of CS. This is a... So you don't usually TP. Okay, so this is this is an interesting play because you don't usually TP in a lot of these scenarios because it could if you, if you TP top lane and you get an assist, that's actually really bad. But luckily, I was I was there first. I got double buff, so now I'm actually pretty strong, and I got a stack on my dark seal, which is really good because we have dark seal. And like I said before, so remember we threw that that Q that I said it was bad right before I teleported. That Q actually sort of started slow pushing the wave towards Victor, which wasn't the worst thing. But then Victor didn't hard push it. And because of that, we were able to catch this wave at our tower. But now at this point in the game, <clears throat> I'm really strong. And I want to... I'm actually thinking about diving Victor. I want to push Victor in, maybe dive him. And also because I'm hard pushing him in now, I want to get vision around the map. That was a pretty be good ward. This ward is pretty bad. Now that I'm looking back, that ward is bad that I just placed because I already have vision where Scuttle is and where the ward that, and the first ward that I placed. So I kind of didn't need to put that ward by like my Raptors. Here I'm getting ganked, but I throw my W at myself and just walk out of there because I know I'm safe with my W. 
Uh, this Pantheon is kind of uh, in thing. Do my EQ combo. Wait till Pantheon Shield runs out to proc my passive because if I auto attack Pantheon with my passive open, then he would have just with with his uh, shield up. Then I would he would just block the entire damage. And so here I'm hard pushing the wave because Victor can't clear this wave, and I want to dive him. I see him on my bot lane's ready for a dive. We don't want him to back. We want to push the wave, and now we want to dive him. That's really bad for Victor. This is a very good early game for us. So, some takeaway so far. We th we threw two bad cues. This is good. We have to learn. We're learning together. This is the point of a, a, a guide. We threw two bad cues. We wasted a flash top. We still got a kill though. Victor actually made a mistake. He should have hard shoved the wave as soon as I TP'd. Instead, he he like let it slow push and then he decided to push it but it was too late because i don't know I, don't, I really don't know what victor what happened with victor because i still got that entire mid wave and then victor victor has tp and he he didn't want to back he didn't want to back and because he didn't back he had no mana so we hard pushed the wave forced them to make a decision do i back and lose a wave or do i stay and try to farm this with no mana he decided to stay and farm it with no mana and then because of that, we just dove him, and then he lost the wave anyway, and he died. So now we, so now we have a really good early game going for us. So now we're in the point of the game where we're, we're in the driver's seat, right? We, I have three kills, and I have six dark steel stacks, which is which is insane. That's like what thirty AP just for my dark steel, I think, right? Insane AP for my dark steel. But now we don't, we want to like impact the entire map so what i do i came back to lane insta push the wave because we have we have 149 ap you actually need 120 ap at level seven to one shot the wave with a level four q so we're about we're about to be there but i could still just destroy the wave with the 150 ap and now i'm ganking by lane because i pushed the wave mid i throw my w where i want my samir to go and where i want to go rex i sees that and he's like nope makes a u-turn jen accepts his fate and well, at least I can get a kill on Pantheon. I want to get I want to get that kill because I would have gotten 10 Dark Shield stacks, but it's fine. Clear this pink ward for gold. And now we're Omega strong. And we're level 7, so now we just perma push the wave. So this is where you have to press your lead, right? If I'm 4-0 in Echo, I got to start dominating the game. If I'm 4-0 and I do nothing, then I'm kind of wasting you know, everything, right? So now, because I have 161 AP. I have 161 AP. So now at this point in the game, I could I could trade on Victor whenever I want. Two co one combo, he has he loses like 40% HP. So basically in two and a half combos, he's he's dead. So I own this lane. As soon as the wave comes up now, I could throw a Q and one shot it. And after I do that, I could either roam, get tower plates, dive him, get vision, help my jungler. Like I could, whatever I want to do, I could do now. And that's just what you have to understand. At this point now, I could do whatever I want to do. I would have dove Victor here, but I saw Pantheon coming on the minimap and someone cleared that ward right there. So I'm going to try to 2v1 here. I have 167 AP and Pantheon's level 5. So I'm going to try to bait Pantheon in here. This is a D1 game, by the way. Wait till this thing goes away. Ah, look at that, guys. Uh, 167 AP, level 7 Echo, could not one-shot a level 5 Pantheon. Just saying. Echo's OP. If I was a Talon with the Serrated Dirk, I would have one-shot Victor, uh, Victor and Pantheon at the same time. Just saying. Just saying. So now we got the Power Spike. If you guys watch Coach Curtis's Echo Guide, he says I once... Echo basically hatches into a champion when he gets Protobelt, and that is true. At this point in the game, like, if you lose this game and you're 4-0 in Echo, it's your fault. It's no one else's fault, it's your fault. Because this game is free. There's no way you don't win this game. Their mid laner does not exist. You can one-shot everybody. Except Pantheon, because for some reason you can't kill a Pantheon level 5. Anyway. But now I just perma-push the wave. Like I said, you don't want really, you don't want to freeze at this point because you don't want to freeze an echo after level seven because you have you one shot the wave you get perma priority 
And you could do stuff like this where you could just die Victor instantly. And you can roam to silence, get vision, do whatever you want, help your jungler, get tower plates. Because if I freeze, I lose Echo's biggest strength, which is his wave clear and his priority, right? So that's why you don't really freeze after, like, you can start one shot in the wave. I don't know why my least was doing there. But I would say it's 10 minutes now. So that was the end of laning phase. Um, I would have flashed here, but it's not kind of it's not worth it. It's not guaranteed kill. Want to play a little bit smarter now? The score is six to nine. Oh, Pantheon ults me here. Throw my W on myself. Proc my passive on Pantheon. Make sure to click R, R behind him, so I get that kill. Protobelt on to. Oh, I messed my Q there, but still got the kill on Rise. So I am Omega Fed now. Take anime jungle cams. Okay, like so we're, we're out of laning phase now. So the first 10 minutes of the game were laning phase. Uh, some takeaways. We are reversing an easy lane. So Victor's considered an easy lane, but he does have his poke damage, which makes him not super easy because Victor can be really annoying, especially depending on how good he is. So some takeaways. Don't instantly throw a Q at the wave. Make sure you only throw a Q at like the melee minions and should try to like last hit them. If you do accidentally mess up like we did with, with two Qs, I believe, and start slow pushing the wave, try to crash the wave as fast as possible so they don't freeze it. And then, because if they freeze it, you'll get ganked, then it's hard for Echo to break a freeze. But like I said, we're reversing a Victor, so Victor is not the best at holding a freeze versus Echo. If we were reversing someone like, I don't know, a Yasuo, and we did it, and we did that, it could have been really bad for us. Um, we use our TP aggressively in the, in, the, in the early game to teleport top, and we ended up getting a kill for it. We, 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 we wasted our flash, but we acknowledge that. But we TP for a guaranteed kill, and then Victor didn't push in the mid wave. He was like last hitting for some reason. He should have pushed it in. I would have lost a lot of minions. But we still got a kill because Victor, and we still got that wave because Victor didn't hard push it. Maybe he couldn't. Maybe he tried to roam top or something. But whatever. He didn't push the wave, so he got the wave. And then I killed Pantheon with the assistance of my jungler. I avoided a gank. I played a gank. Killed enemy jungler. And then. Victor didn't want to back because he, he we were hard pushing the wave and he had no mana and like 70% HP and because we hard pushed the wave we didn't let him back so he had to make a choice do I back and lose the wave or try, do I try to stay and get the wave because I don't want to I don't want to lose the wave and then Victor decided to stay we dove him with my team and he lost the wave anyway and then we put then we got back pushed the wave again went bot side ganked their bot lane and then rinse and repeat, and that's how we won mid lane. So obviously, like I said, this was an easy mid lane, but I have a lot of videos on my channel for different type of mid lane games. And after this guide, I'll be posting a lot of content for season 11, obviously. So if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to uh, watch a victor game, don't worry. We'll have a lot more games coming in the future on this channel. But now let's enter the the mid and uh, eventually late game of this echo guide so now we're in the mid game right we don't want to a ram that's not what echo does we don't want a ram we have teleport we're building nasher's tooth we want to play side lane so one thing i've been doing a lot more now i've been taking jungle camps so echo can one shot jungle camps very easily now because of the echo buffs that happen so you want to take your jungler's camps and enemy jungler's camps when your jungler is doing something else. So my jungler was doing dragon. So what did I do? I took his entire blue side. Why? Because he still has his entire red side. And he's evading. Okay, see, this is why you take your jungler's camps. So now we have to have a fight. I'm just really strong now. We, we have a fight. It's pretty, pretty free. But yeah, like I was saying, my jungler was doing dragon. He was going to dragon. So what does that mean? That means he's not going to be doing his camps. So what do I do? I go and take his blue side camps. And then he's going to back. And he'll get his red side camps. He'll get his raptors. He'll get his golems. It's fine. And by the time he does that, his camps will eventually become start spawning again. So he'll get those blue camps anyway, right? Instead, in this situation, he ran into the enemy jungle. And there was a fight. Luckily, I was there. Obviously, clean up crew. Got two kills. 
but it's fine. So now I'm in the enemy team's jungle. I take, I take, like I said, take jungle camps. It's really easy now because of the echo buffs. Very easy now because of the echo buffs. I don't know why Maokai is here. I, I don't need Maokai to be here. I'm just farming side wave. So now my goal in, in this, in this uh, game is to not die because I don't want to get shut down. Steal enemy camps. Take all the towers in side lane. And get 10 CS per minute. Basically, I have a perfect game. At this point, you should never miss a CS, right? You one-shot the entire wave. You should never miss a CS. Now we should go for 10 CS per minute. I have a perfect game. And my mid to late game is a lot easier. Oh, I'm getting... We're getting jumped on by Pantheon. Uh, Pantheon, what are you doing? I want to kill this Ryze here too. Although I get perma CC, so I have to ult out of there. I may have to sacrifice my Maokai for the greater good. Yeah. So, we had a really good early game, right? We had a really good early game where we got super fed. And when you have a really good early game, it transitions. It makes the game so easy when you transition to mid and late game, right? Because you're already strong. Everything you do is just amplified, right? So, I, so if, if I had an average game, We'd be doing the same thing, except it just would be harder, right? It, we, it would take longer to take camps. We would have we would have less pressure in side lane because we know we're we're weaker, so that means not scared of us, right? But the better your early game is, that's why it's really good to learn early game. The better your early game is, the easier the entire game becomes. So look, I'm taking my jungler's camps again, right? My jungler is an enemy blue side fighting, so he will not be touching his camps, right? That's why you take the camps. So there's a fight happening here. I'm debating if I should TP. My team doesn't need me though. My Lee Sin sort of smurfed that. See? Be smart with your TPs in side lane, right? If I TP there, my team doesn't need me, so I waste my TP, goes on cooldown, and I lose side lane pushing pressure. Look at look at look what I do. I push the wave. I take enemy jungle. Right? So that's one main thing that I've been doing recently. Take enemy jungle, take your jungle. But only take it when, you're when your jungler is doing something else. Right? Then again, honestly, you can take your, your jungler's jungle if you want to funnel yourself and become 1v9. But you might make your jungler useless. That's why only take jungle camps. Your jungle camps when your jungler is doing something else. Really important to learn. So I'm just perma split pushing here. I'm just perma split pushing here. While... Then anything is distracted. They can't stop me. The game is over. The game is literally over here. So the biggest takeaways for outer lane. Biggest takeaways for outer lane. Side lane. Side lane. Farm. Take your jungler's camps when he's not doing them. And, and always take enemy jungle camps. If there's ever a fight. If you have TP and there's ever a fight, make sure you look at what's happening in that fight. Analyze if analyze if that fight is worth TPing to, because sometimes TPing to a fight could ruin your lead. You may int, your team may int, you know? Uh, also... Oh no, here I int. No. So you always, always think about, is it worth TPing to this fight, right? What will I lose for TPing to this fight? Does my team even need me? Or do I keep split pushing and backdooring, right? Um, some, obviously there are things that didn't happen in this game, like there, wa there wasn't like, I didn't really flank this game. We had like that one jungle fight where I cleaned up because I was really fed. Uh, but always look for a flank, right? Get a sweeper, flank the enemy team from a side lane. If the enemy team is A-ramming mid, do a flank, right? From a side lane with, with your sweeper, go around vision, flank them. Uh, here, I think I do. I TP here, yeah. Actually, do I TP? No. See, I TP top here. My team doesn't need me to TP bot. So what do I do? I TP top. Why do I TP top? Because I'll just get all the towers. Because half their team is dead. There's not much to really say with Echo. Well, this game is pretty much a stomp. Well, this game is a stomp because we stomped early game, right? So this is how easy the game feels when. Echo wins early game. That's why, if you're a jungler watching this video, you should gank for your Echo. 
And I want to say, I just remembered, I want to say one more thing about split pushing on Echo. You have to choose what lane you want to go to, right? So, if Dragon is spawning in 30 seconds, and your teleport's on cooldown, and your top laner has teleport, your top laner should go top, or you can just come to Dragon. But you should never go top. Why? Because you don't have TP, and you have to, you have to be there for the fight, so you would go bot lane. And let's say Dragon is down, and Baron is spawning in, let's say, a minute 30 seconds, and you don't have TP. You should be top lane, because there might be a Baron play. You have to get Baron vision, and you have to push top wave, so you have priority for Baron. So knowing which lane to be is pretty important as well, when you're split pushing. Always be in the lane that is close to the next objective when you don't have TP. But if you have, if you do have TP, then you could be in the opposite lane, causing trouble and playing with the enemy's head because, oh my god, does Echo have TP? Oh my god, Echo has TP. Be careful. Or, yeah, always be a threat. So, that's just some stuff for out of laning. Echo out of laning is just split pushing, taking farms, and fighting. That's basically all, all, all it is. But yeah, I hope you guys learned something from this VOD for, of, about laning and out of laning. Uh, next part of this, uh, we'll have a lot more videos with Echo. It's, it's an Echo YouTube channel, obviously. But next part of this video, which will be the last part of the guide, will be about stuff that I missed. It'll be pretty quick. But yeah, let's get right into it. So lastly, to finish off this guide, I want to say some things that I forgot to mention about Echo's abilities and some other things to note. Firstly, Echo's Q at, at rank 4. When your champion is level 7, you could one-shot the wave, the caster minions, the ranged minions, with 120 AP. This is when you get your dominating wave clear. Echo can use his W to stun minions, so you want to do this if you want to like hold the wave or tank the minions, stop them from crashing into your tower. Very useful. You could also use your W for vision. So your W gives you vision where you don't have like where you, where you don't, it's basically like a ward, a temporary ward. So throw your W into Baron Pit to see if the enemy's doing Baron. Throw your W into Bushes to see if the enemy's in there. So Echo's W is good for that as well. You can use your E to follow enemy dashes. So if, if you time your E blink when you click on the enemy champion at the right time and they flash, you'll follow them. Or for example, like Zoe, you know how Zoe uses R and she like teleports to an area and then teleports back. If you press E on her at the, at the perfect time, you will follow her back to her original location. So Echo's E is really useful there. And also you could use Echo's R to ult back to lane. You should only do this if you if you have mana. If you have mana, if you want to ult back to lane to get a wave so you don't fall back behind in CS. You don't do this often. You only do it in rare scenarios where you'll be fine, you'll be safe. But you want to get the extra CS, you want to get the extra you know XP or you could also do it if you want if you want to be really fancy if you you are back to lane and one shot somebody and you hit them with your R from base that's pretty cool as well <laughs> but anyway that's some stuff about Echo's abilities if I missed anything in this guide please comment comment down below if I missed anything I'll also comment it down below um so yeah and lastly if you want to improve on Echo try to be MVP every game what does MVP mean if you go to op.gg Look at your match history. If you played the best on your team based on, you know, their calculations, you get the MVP, a little gold MVP thing, or you get ace if your team loses. Try to be MVP every game. This is this is what Jalau Ban does in Korea or in, or, or in China. He literally goes for MVP every game because he's the best player in the game. So if you're not getting MVP every game, that means there's always something for you to improve on. So watch out for that. Look out for that. But anyway, that is my Echo Guide for Season 11. We'll have a lot more Echo videos. Hope you guys enjoyed. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.